Hello everyone and welcome to the 2019 Memorial Championships presented by Discraft. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, along with special guest in Kevin Jones of Prodigy Discs. And Kevin, little bonus footage. We're going back to 2019. Some extra footage I had and thanks for joining. You ready to do this? Yeah, honestly, I'm really excited to check this out. These are going to be a lot of uh, shots that I don't remember and honestly there might even be a couple times when i'm not sure what disc i'm throwing it's like kind of like that so well the pro tour is kicking off in 2019 as we're flying over hole number one and uh it worked out in my schedule to go out and kind of grab some cards throughout the entire week so here is footage that wasn't really contracted before but now we get a chance to watch it and uh, get some insight we got ricky waisaki on the tee Uh, talk a little bit about the, the how daunting hole one really is here as we're watching Ricky. <laughs> well, extremely. I mean, at the level that everybody plays disc golf this time, this time, uh, it's very important that you get in bounds. Like the second that you end up short and you don't touch that wall, you're gonna have a hard time catching up to the field in order to like have a good finish at this tournament. So just getting in bounds is so crucial. And it looks like you've got plenty of power on that clearing. And I don't know if you can start off a season or a tournament or a year or anything any better than that. Wow, that was awesome. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Uh, Calvin Heimberg, Team Innova. And now pretty fortunate that he gets the red flag way up there. So he can take it from there to try and save his par. Yeah, that's a great mistake from Calvin. He's going to be dropping in a three. Pretty conservative approach there by Austin. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way to start your tournament as well. Honestly, it might he's probably dealt with less stress than I have so far in this event. <laughs> uh, he still gives it a really good run. And, you know, Ricky so deadly, of course, inside the circle. You already counting this one? Yeah, I would be. Wow, but a little surprising. Surprise us. Everybody can surprise us. Uh, see, speaking of surprises, Calvin Heimberg in a hat? <laughs> I guess that's right. I haven't uh I didn't even notice it. Uh looks like a beautiful day. We're looking at mid-afternoon right now. And just a gorgeous day out there in Fountain Hills. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know if the water is telling us that the wind is blowing to our left, but uh, if so, we're going to have a headwind on our next hole. You can't be too mad. Of course, Ricky not thrilled with missing an inside the circle putt, but walking away with there with a par, not so terrible. Nice. Yeah, and like as a group, said, you can start this hole off with an eight easily if you're not careful. What are they doing on hole two? Hole two is an uh, many options um, is given are given to the players. They can either throw a sidearm if they really have big power, a turnover backhand. Um, this is definitely a lefty favorable hole, but um, and there's also spike hyzer and a like a down the middle line as well. So plenty of options, and it's another really tough hole. You really don't want to start off going OB on this one either. That's an H three V two for me. Playing pretty aggressive, honestly. I'm surprised it did that. Yeah, and this parallels hole number three's fairway. So uh, although you're pushing to the right, we see Ricky pretty much in the center. But if you go too far right, you could find yourself OB in hole three's fairway, right? Yeah, for sure. There is that wall that can protect you. So if height is important on it, but uh, I don't think I flirted with it too much. And Calvin needs to sit down. Yeah, Calvin was showing us the big Spike Heiser line that actually isn't available anymore as of uh, the new memorial. And I love the play here by Austin. Just, uh, just all around a really smart, safe play there. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic play, especially with each of their power. They can get a birdie from there, and that's all you want. Ooh, this is aggressive. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he, he'll get to mark it from up there, which is really good. He'll get all of that distance, but just hitting and going out of bounds. Get it. Wow, oh. that almost went in as well. It needs to sit, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, that green is so hot when people are coming in on it. Oh, that's a pretty cool. common occurrence, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It happens all the time. If you're going to throw a hyzer, a lot of times we try to play outside of that tree that Ricky obviously went way inside, but with a straighter disc. That looked like, um, I don't know, that might have been a pig. Yeah, definitely with some kind of mid. Here you are lining up the forehand. Wow, so I totally see why I do or why I did what I did on that drive. That was an A2 approach, so that I took off a lot of distance on that shot. Okay, interesting. So interesting to see my putt is a little bit uh, faster <laughs> than it is currently, I think. Uh, and uh, Calvin's trying to save his par. A little bit of early struggles here on the uh, on this early green. Yeah, luckily this is one of the hardest holes, so if we're not getting like a birdie, even if we bogey it, it's, it's not really the biggest deal. One of the few holes out here where the, there's danger on both the tee shot and on the approach or on the green. Uh, and these first six or eight holes really bring the water into play. And it kind of gets easier on the back half. But uh, you're, always, you're always conscious of where you're throwing and the speed in which you're coming in on uh, these first few opening holes. We're going to move over to hole number three, and this one at just 294 feet. This kind of feels like a gimme, doesn't it, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, especially from what we've played so far. This is, uh, even for the whole course, though, there's not too much danger on this hole. You really just don't want to yank it over to the right, but people have options of whatever they're comfortable with throwing 294 feet. Ricky throwing, I believe, a putter. Looks like I have an M2 in my hand, so a kind of overstable mid-range. Not bad. Definitely, not, definitely bad. not flirting with that right side line at all, are you? <laughs> yeah, that's the last thing you want to do. So I guess it's smart to stay away from that. Calvin knows he's going to pin it not, no matter what. That was a firebird, I believe. And I'll, I'll say this now as we're watching Austin get up. He throws very quickly. Like, <laughs> I, I do my best to always record it. This is nothing new. He just gets up and fires very quickly. So if you wonder why all of a sudden we come in mid-throw, that's why. <laughs> He's ready to go, and I love it. Yeah, it's very true. Great putt there from Ricky. He's definitely found his groove. Yeah, we'll see if hole one was an anomaly for him after uh, just, again, something you wouldn't expect. But two good putts on two and three. You've got about the same distance. All right. <laughs> Just squeaking it in. This is fun. I have no idea if I'm going to make it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little coronavirus uh, catch-up and bonus footage brings us here. Uh, of course, thank you for joining us. We'll have to think about some giveaways here throughout the uh, four rounds, actually, that I'm going to have for everyone to watch as Calvin taps in. Yeah, yeah I'm, you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> does not have a routine um, other than step up, look at the line, know the job, and throw it. So I, I, he technically does have a routine in the matter, in the fact of that he doesn't do any like pre shot like um, like throws or like air throws or whatever. He just steps up and knows what he's going to do and executes it. So I love the fact that he basically doesn't look like he's going to overthink it. And uh, it seems to work really well for him. Hole four, this downhill, you can bring a little bit of the danger into play if you go deep with the road or even maybe the electrical boxes that are on that right side that kind of block your putt if you're uh, inside 35, 40 feet. Yeah, so it is downhill, but this is still a really, really big shot. Ricky throwing what he just did there is, is incredible. Like It's very, very hard to get in the park job area, and Ricky just did that. Yeah, there's a fine line of, of putting enough power on it, but then not carrying or rolling into the road. And you seem to hit the sweet spot right there and give yourself a good look at birdie. Nice. I'm happy to do that. That uh, might be inside the circle, which is everything you could ask for. 
Oh, and that was a really good shot too. Just not quite enough push and no finish on the skip either. And with this hole being blind, it's there's always this anticipation, like, did I throw it hard enough? Did I throw it, you know, too far? Yeah. Everyone's kind of wondering on the tee because you don't know exactly how close you are once you've thrown it. Yeah, definitely. And if you end up, like, right or if you think you threw it too far, um, there's a little OB, little uh, – uh, box as well that you could be in or long on the road if you caught bad action oh that was really close yeah, just a bit high on that left side it looked good you've got 18 20 feet maybe maybe 22 feet yep are you even thinking about the road right there no no road i put nose down enough to where that wouldn't um that wouldn't come into play. Even if I airballed it, it would probably just... And that grass is really thick, too, so um, not much of a thought. And routine for Rick. I, I wouldn't say this hole is quite a bonus, but it's not definitely one you walk up and think, oh, I absolutely am getting hole four. So maybe it's almost a bonus, but not. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not one of those things that you can just like throw it and out of your hand, you know it's parked. You kind of have to get a little bit of good action, maybe tree love, because sometimes we throw it into that tree. And then a lot of times you just have to make a putt. So hole five plays straight ahead. Uh, road, of course, come in, comes into play on the right side and then sidewalk deep of the basket. And if you go far enough left, you can find out of bounds as well. Yeah, so this is the hole that we don't get to play anymore, unfortunately. Ooh, that went too far. Um, but doing what Rick did is, in my opinion, a really smart play. Um, if you get it too far but in line with the basket, you're going to be dunking in a, a three. Um, doing what I did, now if I do miss my putt or um, catch a little roll or something, I could be facing a four. So a little bit tricky spot. That's a great shot there from Calvin. The other mistake that you really want to avoid is going OB to the right, turning your disc over too too much and going OB right. That's a beautiful shot from Austin right there. Yeah, Austin finds himself just outside the circle. Oh, smooth. Yeah, that looked awesome, and that's like my favorite kind of make is whenever the disc just feels like it sat down right in the bottom of the basket. All right. So when you take out your your uh, headphone, your iPod there, or your uh, ear pod, sorry, when you take that out, what, it's kind of a funny habit. Yeah, it's actually, I don't know. That's a really good question. I think I like to hear people tell me like good shot and stuff. <laughs> okay. So I, I definitely do that. And um, I don't know. Uh, it's It's been a while since I've worn the AirPods too. So I can't tell exactly what I'm thinking, but definitely I want, I, I like to hear, hear that stuff. And a great shot there by Calvin. I don't know. He lost the hat somewhere. All right, we're moving on to hole six. <laughs> The shortest hole, I think, that we find, or next, the next one's maybe the shortest, but this is the second shortest with plenty of danger. Yeah, this one is so tricky. Um, another one that you have options on your line, you can, and what I do on it is I, I definitely look at the wind and I try to figure out which way the wind is going to help me because you have to throw the disc high. So if you're going to like let the wind get under your disc it, it can get a little bit scary i'm imagining that it was a left to right here if i decided to throw a backhand meaning that the wind is going to push my disc down i'm really happy with that this is um i guess one of the easier holes but it's it's also one that you could easily let get out of a let let it get out of hand yeah and we heard yours hit and just kind of filter through the tree and we saw calvin's do the exact same thing that could just as easily catch edge and roll all the way down the hill and out of bounds. Yeah, so, it could. A delicate shot. Okay, so everybody's throwing a backhand hyzer here. I'm imagining that I would almost put money that the, the wind is blowing left to right, and we're just using that wind to set our disc down and keep it pretty straight. 
Rick from about 40. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even think about that. He, he is so sure that he's going to hit the, the cage, the pole, mostly the chains, but um, it's not a problem for him. Austin just a few inches inside of that, also equally Ooh. as confident. Wow. Wow, his not, butt looks so good right now. Not quite as tough of an angle, but it's still potential roll away all day. For sure. Or, I mean, it would have hyzered off and who knows where. So it looks like a star birdie, am I right? Uh, it's looking that way. Kelvin wishing he had his hat on right now as he's staring at the sun. <laughs> That's a solid start. A yeah, that's honestly that is I, awesome. Well, I had a really good start. Now that I'm seeing this, <laughs> what are you doing here on seven? Uh, hole seven is a, a really really technical short hole. It's uh, I, I'm imagining I'm throwing some a putter um, a little bit pretty flat, but uh, I'm I'm not really sure. I, I bet it's just a PA three. Yeah. You need just the right amount of speed. All right. And I set. Checks up for you right where you want to be. This is one of those holes that when somebody like Calvin throws it in front of you, it looks so easy. But then you step up there and you're like, wow, this actually has to be the perfect line and the perfect speed. Otherwise, you could go OB like Austin might. We're going to get a dramatic pause. Eh, unfortunately, out of bounds for Austin. Just getting over the edge. It's such a tricky little short hole. It's a, I have a lot of respect for this hole. That needs to sit too. Oh, the speed was so good, though. Yeah, you guys are making it look easy. This is when this hole gets tricky and pretty hard. Austin had to make a probably headwind 25-foot uphill putt with water behind. And, okay, he's putting really, really good right now. Yeah, great start for him. Ricky and I have talked about this course. He said that he's finished the front nine at like even par multiple times and still shot nine under. So knowing that there's like a back nine like that ahead of me, I'd like to be able to really shred this round. So another one of the par fours that's out here, it's actually the, the, the final par four we'll see. And uh, this requires precision off the tee and then an even more precise approach shot, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Sometimes it can just take brute force off the tee, though, if you really have a big arm. I'm thinking that I'm not throwing what I threw in 2020 on this hole, but whenever I threw what I what I figured out in 2020, it made this hole so much easier. And this hole actually, in 2020, averaged the easiest on the course, I want to say. Yeah, so I definitely did not throw what I should be throwing. I, I threw down the middle... <laughs> Little hyzer, caught a late tree, but uh, so kind of interesting to hear you say that. In a year later, you've changed. You had changed up your game plan. Yeah, definitely. Like seeing what Calvin did right there is a, is kind of what I'm talking about. Throw a big hyzer over that tree on your right, and you're gonna be down there far. You're not gonna go too far to where you go in the water. And Rick is doing it as well. I I just missed the memo this year, I guess. <laughs> That's a great shot. Getting that far left is, is making that shot pretty easy. That second shot. And then Austin does try to go down the middle. Thing is, if you hit that tree or those trees, you got some work to do. This is no fun. Yeah, he's got to just lace it through and he comes up. Oh, he ends up being safe, and who would have thought you'd be this stymied up against a tree on this course? Yeah, that's yeah, right. There's not that many of them. <laughs> and then you throw it behind one of the only other trees. Oh, that's funny. 
I'm not too mad about that shot, I can tell you. Having a putt at it at least and not being in danger is uh, is good. And then Ricky is just so close right here, and he's still going to throw his force over flex Annie because that's the shot he throws on everything. So you actually sit at six under through seven, and then uh, you gave it a good run. Yeah, I think I was outside the circle too, so it's interesting to see that I didn't jump it. And Austin, it's crazy to look at his score and see that he's just three under, and it feels like he's made every single putt in every situation. <laughs> I know, right? That is weird. As we see a few tap outs, Rick takes the birdie. I want to thank, uh, of course, the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I know legit disc golf certainly helped support this and some other giveaways that we did. And I want to thank uh, Parse Productions, who I believe was ultimately the creator of the uh, drone flyover. So all this bonus footage coming at you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and, and checking it out. Stress-free birdie as we move into the final hole of the front nine. And you see the basket off uh, in the side there. That's the basket you guys are throwing to now. That is. And here we go. This hole is really hard. I would imagine it's one of the hardest holes uh, relative to par. Uh, if you're not afraid of losing like a, a valuable disc, then a, a not a bad idea is to, to send a big hyzer. Uh, somewhere around the basket or long of the basket and you might have an easy-ish three or maybe even get inside the circle But a lot of people play it really safe and this is pretty pretty safe. That's not going to the pin. I don't think No, it, it remains in bounds the spotter isn't isn't concerned and you're right This comes in as the most difficult hole out of all 18 holes on the course averaging 3.47 so you're exactly right when it comes to relative to par. That's pretty good line. Um, it, it needs to go though. It needs to have distance to it. Otherwise, it could be a little short. Do you feel like just laying up and walking away with the three is is a perfectly fine play here? Yeah, absolutely. The only thing is, like simply walking away with a three is really difficult, honestly. The green is so small, so even if you're just at like where Calvin is, I bet there's a big headwind here. And parking that upshot is sometimes a little bit harder than we think. You're just trying to lay it out. Oh, I totally remember that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, I definitely remember that. And that's kind of that was my point. Maybe that was in the back of my mind too. Um because that, you know, that approach wasn't terrible, but it just kind of caught edge and rolled right out of bounds, and that's what Austin's is doing too. So, yeah, walking away with a three is not quite as easy as I'd like to think. Ooh. And maybe a little carryover frustration after the OB approach you had. Likely, and definitely have a, a left or right wind there, and I needed to, to commit more like Austin did right there. All right, well, we're going to watch you guys tap out. I want to thank you, Kevin, for joining. It's our first time doing commentary together. Uh, I appreciate it and look forward to seeing you in the back nine. And uh, leave a comment and a like below, guys, and we'll find something to give away just for tagging along here at the 2019 Memorial Championships presented by Discraft. Here's your scores of the rest of the division through the front nine during this opening round. See you in the back, Kevin. Yep, see you there, Terry.